Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. This is an opportunity that the Lord has granted us for what we are going to do in this day. We're going to be glad in it. Glory to God. You should make up your mind and decide the joy is going to be the order of the day uh, that you will succeed in that day. Don't just um, be passive in your mind. Acknowledge your true identity and what has been given to you. And instead of letting letting it, uh, let things the way they are and they are not in line with the purpose and the plan of God, you just stand firm on your ground and decide to see exactly what is in, ter- in, in, in line with the will of God. That should be your mentality or your decision or desire to see today. You should decide to see that because it's your right. You know, it's like when uh, you are given the inheritance and uh, when you're given the inheritance, you take it, you take it, you take it, you take it. But nobody can take his inheritance unless he's conscious of it. When we're not conscious of what has been given to us, we do not take it seriously. We do not. We just let it be or we we kind of think that probably um, it's not ours, you know. You, you will think that it's not yours, but the moment you know that something belongs to you and it's right there, you will take it and use it. And, and, and again, you need it. You need it. So acknowledging or acknowledgement every single day is the solution. Acknowledgement, acknowledging what has been given to us. So what are we going to do today? We're going to acknowledge every good thing, like the Bible says, that is in us, given to us, but in us, in Christ Jesus. When we acknowledge it, we are actually saying, well, this is our glory to God. So from there, you can go far. From there, you are actually learning to exercise your authority as a son. You are supposed to exercise your authority as a child of God. And if you begin to exercise, you can only grow. You know, when you exercise, you, you get better in whatever thing. You, you get better. That, that's, that's a fact. That's what happens. Glory to God. We bless the Lord for this opportunity today. And uh, if this is a day whereby we're going to be glad in it and we are going to exercise authority and acknowledging who we are, you know, you will find that life is taking a new, a, new, a new shape that is in line with your conviction inside your heart. I remember the universe itself does not we do not depend on universe on the universe the universe depends on us there's something in us that will cause changes out there you know if we are convinced in a certain way we are imposing that conviction on our in our universe and then that's what you will see that's what you see. Glory to God. So when we hear the gospel, it changes the way we think and the way our belief system is adjusted. And what happened? What happens is that we begin to see things happening according to our convictions inside our heart. There's something about man now. Now this, uh, especially now that you are a son of God, it means it means everything. It means everything. The world is supposed to listen to you. The universe is supposed to listen. Everything begins to listen to you because you are a child of God. You are a child of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are in the book of uh, John, chapter, this time in chapter 16. Chapter 16, we did uh, deal, we dealt with chapter 16, 15 rather, and now we're going to do 
chapter 16 and we're talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, what do we find here in the book of John? Chapter 16, verse, verse, verse 5. Verse 5. He says, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Sorrow has filled your heart. Sorrow has filled your heart. Why? Because Jesus had said, that is going to go away. Uh, we did talk about this previously in chapter 14, whereby Jesus is talking about his departure. And of course, the sorrow came into their hearts. So he's saying here, but now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, you know, Jesus had already spoken these things to them. In chapter 14, in chapter 15, Jesus had spoken about his departure. So he's saying, now this time you're not asking me any question. Why? Because I spoke to you about these things. And sorrow has filled your heart. At this moment, sorrow had filled their heart. All right. Verse 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. The helper will not come to you. Now, still Jesus is insisting on the helper, the Holy Spirit. Is this not that the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. The helper will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So Jesus' departure meant that um, he's not going away from the Jews. He's, he's not going away from his disciples. He's not going away from the world. No, it, it meant there's another form of godliness, of, of uh, Godhead, in the person of the Holy Spirit that they were going to receive. And if they were to receive the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, well, for you to receive the Holy Spirit is good that I depart because the Holy Spirit is not physical. And uh, I am physical now. You're looking at me. You get, you'll be confused. But if the Holy Spirit comes, it means I have come. It means the Father has come to die in you. So the presence of the Holy Spirit means it is my presence. It is the presence of the Father. Because, again, remember, he is the spirit of truth, the spirit of Christ. And at the same time, the spirit of the Father. So the presence of the Holy Spirit means the presence of Christ. It means the presence of the Father. Glory to God. I will send him to you, he says. In verse 8, he says, and when he has come... He will convict the world of sin. So when he comes, he will convict the world of sin. Not you, the world. <laughs> Glory. So you see, the Holy Spirit did not convict believers of sin. He will convict the world of sin. Why? Because at times people don't realize that sin came in the world through one man, and that all men became sinners. So there's a need of us uh, letting them know that that's how it works. Because before they appreciate the work that has done, they have to understand the problem. Glory. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So three important things here. One, sin. Two, righteousness. Three, judgment. So sin, sin, um, righteousness, and of judgment. Of course, these are three separate things we have to explain. Verse 9 says, of sin because they do not believe in me. Of sin because they do not believe in me. So why was sin supposed to be, to be known, a knowledge of sin? Because if they had come to understand, you know, everything about sin, how sin came about, 
then they will be able to believe on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, because he's the only one who is able and capable of saving the world from that sin. John had said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. A sin of the world. So, but the world was not convinced that there is any sin, you know. So they had to be convinced, first and foremost, that there was sin, there was sin and there is sin, and that sin can only be taken away by the Son of God so that they may believe in Him. Not the law, nothing else could have taken away, not even uh, the sacrifices. All those things could not answer, could not help at all, you know. So of sin because they do not believe in me. Of sin because they do not believe in me. So sin had to be known so that people may realize the importance of believing in Christ, the only answer to that sin. The moment they do not realize that sin was, I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about sin in the past was a problem because today, since Jesus Christ has come, the sin is no more a problem, but it is a problem to those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ. See, that's why I'm using past because sin is no more a problem. If it is a problem today, uh, then it's an insult to the work of Jesus Christ and is also a sign that we do not understand why Christ came he came to give us a new life. He came to answer all the world's problems that were caused by one man. So he did the work very perfectly. And as we speak now, sin is no more. Sin is not a problem. The problem will always be not acknowledging Christ and what he did specifically about sin. If we continue to think that even the problems that Jesus solved are still problems today. We are, we are manifesting our ignorance to the highest level. So, but now he had to come and convince the world of sin and then they will be able to believe on Je in Jesus Christ. Verse 10 says, of righteousness because I go to my father. Of righteousness because I go to my Father. Now that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross and then go to the Father. You know, when he went to the Father, the Holy Spirit came. And you know, the Holy Spirit couldn't dwell in people that are not justified or made righteous. Or were made righteous because we, he, Jesus was about to die and make us righteous. As righteous as he is. And so he moves to the Father, so people had to understand the problem of sin and how it was solved and the righteousness that was given to us in the place of sin. Now we have righteousness. And he says, And you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. And uh, when he talks about judgment, he's talking about the rule of this world who was judged, who was the rule of this world. The ruler means the prince of this world. And again, it also means um, the one who, who, who determines an order of things or how things are supposed to unfold. And this is Adam who died or who sinned and the whole world fell in that sin. I mean, he is the one who set the, the, the flow of what unfolded after. So his sin affected everything, affected man and affected the universe. Everything was affected. So he was the prince. So he says he's been judged. Being judged means he's, no, he's been taken away. He's not a problem anymore. You know, and why, what are we seeing? We are seeing that a sin is known, but again, is taken away by Jesus Christ. And again, the righteousness has come to reign and Adam the one who calls the voice no more. So we have no excuse or any problem. We have to understand that this is what the Holy Spirit reveals. Glory to God. Shalom. Shalom.
reminding you to subscribe on Church of Life Rwanda if you haven't done it yet and you'll be receiving more of these teachings that will help you grow in the knowledge of God, the knowledge of yourself and you'll be fulfilled in this life. And this is the only solution God has given to us and we have to understand it through the gospel. You are blessed.